My name is Nick Hill Goyle. I am a sociologist at Wesleyan University and the author of the book, Live to See the Day, Coming of Age in American Poverty. For the past several years, my research and work has been at the intersection of educational inequality, social welfare, poverty, and incarceration. I first came to the neighborhood of Kensington in 2015 to visit an alternative last chance high school called El Centro de Estudiantes, which works with youth who had dropped out. The neighborhood is the poorest neighborhood in the city of Philadelphia. Babies born in Kensington are expected to live to the age of 71, 17 fewer years than the babies born in Society Hill, a very rich, affluent neighborhood just a few miles away near Center City. And at El Centro, I began to interview uh, a group of young people, teachers, uh, counselors, and other school staff uh, to understand their educational experiences uh, and how they viewed their, their community and larger society. I met three extraordinary young people, Ryan, Giancarlos, and Emmanuel, now known as Karem. And I began to learn about their past educational experiences, their lives outside of school, their hopes, dreams, and aspirations. And I ultimately began to trace their lives from childhood to adulthood. And then I followed their lives of their mothers, Rainy, Yvette, and Marta, to provide an intergenerational account of how poverty, incarceration, and social and economic inequality are transmitted from one generation to the next. And together, their lives help us understand what the effects and the legacies of welfare reform, deindustrialization, educational privatization, and neoliberal economic restructuring have had on urban neighborhoods like Kensington and others. One of the stories in the book that is most prominent is that of Ryan Rivera in middle school when he starts a fire in a trash can. This act of, of juvenile behavior ends up leading him into the juvenile justice system, getting funneled from juvenile detention centers to alternative disciplinary schools and other institutions. And I show how zero tolerance exclusionary discipline have, has criminalized, disengaged, and ultimately pushed young people out of school. I tell about his quest to ultimately graduate high school in the face of daunting challenges, evictions, economic insecurity, homelessness, hunger, uh, and, and other uh, social ills. One of the dominant threads in the book is the failings of the social safety net. Ryan and Emmanuel and, and Giancarlos lived in pretty deep poverty, which meant that they were often living paycheck to paycheck, waiting until the beginning of the month when the public assistance checks would come in. And that had a debilitating effect on their educational experiences. It meant that they often uh, missed school, they sometimes failed grades, and they had to overcome the effects of toxic stress and other mental health challenges. The, the ultimate conclusion of the book is that poverty is a crime against humanity and that we in the richest country in the history of the world have the wealth and resources to provide everyone with a good life, with the basic necessities of education, childcare, housing, healthcare, broadband, and, and decent employment. The, what we, what we know is that the New Deal and the Great Society have brought enormous prosperity and economic security to millions upon millions of Americans. And our job is to finish the unfinished business of the New Deal and the Great Society so that we have equitable public goods, direct cash transfers in the form of an expanded child tax credit, and basic livelihood for ordinary Americans. It is up to us to ensure that the Kensingtons of this country have decent economic security and basic dignity. And if we are going to protect American democracy, then we've got to invest in working class families, in working class communities, and provide everyone with a good life and economic security.